Welcome back again, and we're going further with our introduction to Vertex. This time we are going to talk a little bit more about Vertex Web Package, and we're going to integrate some additional features that are pretty consistent with a normal web-based application. So for example, what if you need to handle sessions in Vertex? Well, that's actually a pretty easy thing to add. We just say router.route uh, handler, and we say session handler create. Now, the interesting bit comes into what type of session store do we want to use. In Vertex, we know that we can cluster our application using tools like InfiniSpan or Hazelcast or some others. So we have two options. We can have a session store which is clustered and we just say clustered session store dot create or we can have a session store which is purely local. depending on your use case, either or works. The beauty of this is that when you're running Vertex in a clustered arrangement, the clustered session store is effective across all members of the cluster. The local session store is only effective on a single node. For our purposes today, I'm just going to use a local session store. So we'll just copy out this clustered session and we'll put our store here. That's it. Now we have support for sessions. This means that we can store information about users, about their current state, things like that, without having to set cookies. Uh, this is just going to set a session ID header that is in the client's browser, um, and we can specify a little more detail about how we want that session to be handled. So we can say require SSL for cookies, uh, allow only HTTP for cookies, we can set the minimum length of the session key, uh, we can turn on nagging for HTTPS, we can set the name of the cookie and the path of the cookie, so on and so forth. By default it's just going to create a standard session ID that Vertex can handle automatically. Uh, what about cross-origin? So cores router dot route handler cores handler oh, I think I imported the wrong cores handler. I did. I imported the one from Netty instead of the one from Vertex. So we need this one, create, and then we need to specify what is the allowed origin pattern. So let's say we wanted everything from example.com, or we could just say everything from localhost, so on and so forth. Uh, sometimes you might want to allow all. The difficulty you run into there is the requirements around cores means that you have to carefully specify certain options when you allow all. Uh, when you allow all, you cannot allow credentials at the same time. So just be careful about using the wildcard. In our case, I'm just going to set it to localhost. Now, what about some other typical things that we might want to do in a web application? Um, there is a, an option to set up request logging. So we can have a logger handler. So we can say router.route handler logger handler create and we can specify the log format. We can tell it to 
not buffer the logging, things like that. And what this is going to do is for every request that comes in, it's going to log the request and some of the information about that request. What about cross-site request forgery or CSRF, XSRF, however you want to refer to it? We can do that pretty quickly as well. Router.route.handler uh, CSRF. Handler create. And we can specify a secret. Uh, I highly recommend that you generate this secret randomly. That way it's not obvious. Uh, this is used as a salt to generate individual CSRF information for each request. So we might do something like uh, dd input file equals dev u random uh, block size equals 384 count equals 1. And that gives us some random data which we can then pipe through base 64 and then we can just grab a snippet of this and use it as our secret. And now we have logging of our requests, sessions, we have cores, we have CSRF capabilities. Um, the next thing that we might need is to be able to handle cookies. So the uh, CSFR, CSRF handler requires cookies. The session handler requires cookies. So above those, we need to add a handler for cookies. Oh, the cookie handler has been deprecated. Let me, uh, remind myself from the documentation down here. Ah, so I don't even need to do this anymore. I just realized in the latest release of Vertex, cookies are handled out of the box by the Vertex router. No need to add anything special. So that's how we can add support for some basic web things in Vertex pretty quickly and easily. And I look forward to seeing you in our next session.